All right. Welcome, everyone. Um, while everyone's given a chance to sign on, let's go over the legalities a little bit. Um, past performance is no indicator of prior or future performance. Uh, we are not registered investment advisors. Uh, everything in this show should be taken for entertainment purposes only. Um, nothing in this show is an offer to buy or sell any security or option. Um, always read the disclaimer. Read the fine print. Make sure you read the fine print, okay? There's a lot of important information. So we'll give everyone a chance to sign on while we do some last minute adjustments. Wet our whistle before we start yapping. It's an interesting day in the market today. So let's see. We can get through this in a reasonable amount of time. So let's go ahead and start. Hey Norris, welcome. So we're giving everybody a chance to sign on. So let's go ahead and start. Um, as you guys can see from the numbers, it was kind of an ugly day today, right? The Dow ended up down 126 points. Um, the S&P was down about, what, 11 points. NASDAQ down about 20. The small caps, the Russell uh, 2K was down about 11, 12 points. Yeah, the VIX, VIX is up a little bit, but it's still holding below that $15, $16 dollar level. So it's, it's, we're seeing these little sell downs, but we're not seeing a big spike in the VIX, which would be your, which would be really your red flag for a big sell off. So, you know, the Dow today, that post today, that uh, pin of that number, that red number was the fourth day in a row. So that was a four day losing streak for the Dow. Um, well, the weakness today was in the financials. You know, this whole Turkey thing is going on and it's kind of just it's starting to take a little form now and stuff. And we're starting to see really the gist behind it and what it's going to do going forward, even though the media uh, again, we watched a long string of talking heads today telling us it's the end of the world. Not even close. OK, gang, we talked about that last week, right? Uh, really, Spain, Italy, some of those European countries have big investments in uh in uh, Turkey, the United States, really the only vest we have in there is uh, about 18 billion. So that's not even that much. It's actually the one of the lowest. Uh, but the old financials were weak today. Uh, Goldman Sachs and JP Morgan, especially, they took the, they took big hits today, down about one percent uh, equally. And a lot of that has to do with the uh, currency devaluations, the uh, topsy turvy uh, Forex markets right now and things like that. It, you know, it, it affects uh, banks and financial companies just have this certain exposure to these countries um, that doesn't offer the same risk that an, that other companies have. So people kind of take their money off the board. It was interesting today. Mark Cuban called into uh, CNBC. Uh, we happened to be watching at the time when he called in and he said that he's lightened up on stocks because he's worried about the market. So we'll remind Mark Cuban that uh, you buy when they sell, you sell when they buy. If you're selling when the sell-off's happening, you're too late. So what else happened in commodity news? Okay, everybody knows we're long on gold right now, right? Well, let's talk about oil first. <laughs> uh, oil hit a seven-week low on crude. There might be a play in there somewhere too. Huh? I mean, with these sanctions on Iran and stuff like that, I mean, there's, a, there's certain countries that we know are circumventing those sanctions, and, and it's always been obvious. It always will be obvious. Um, whether for whatever reasons people keep it out of the light uh, is is a whole other story. But, you know, we know there's some circumventing of these sanctions. We know it happened when North Korea had the ha heavy sanctions. Uh, there was a certain amount of Chinese purchasing and things like that, Russian. Um, and probably the same thing happening with crude oil. But the market's under big pressure right now. So uh, is it a time to buy? Isn't it? We've been looking at the chart and we're just not seeing the bottom yet. And we're, we're just not seeing any uh, reason to uh, get long on it right now. Is there still room on that short trade? Uh, possibly, you know, with especially with all these geopolitical pressures going on. Anything can happen with commodities. And it did. Gold got crushed this morning. So it made that retrace to twelve hundred on the spot gold. And that's what we were expecting. You know, we got in a little bit early on this trade because it started to show some life when that spot gold was sitting around uh, uh, about 12, 10, 12, uh, what, 12, but between 12, 10 and 12, 14. Um, and it could have made a move either way. You know, it's showing a little bit of life. And of course, Friday, kind of the, 
the rug kind of came out from underneath it and it continued into today. You know, it, there's a lot, a lot of good, good debate on, on gold right now going on. If you're reading the good rags like Kitco and stuff like that, um, very good discussions on gold. Is this where the capitulation is going to happen? We feel like it is, and that's why we're staying in that long trade. Um, we actually had uh, something, a trade that looked like we we're going to have to cash it in at a loss, but it got a little profitable today. Twitter had a big day today, right? Twitter just was on fire. Um, and that was because one of the big short sellers from Citrix came out and said that he is now long on the stock. And it makes sense. Twitter is important. We always talk about it. Um, how really Twitter is an important uh, company and it, it really has latched itself on uh, as the uh, de facto of social media right now, right? I mean, everybody's on Twitter. Uh, we still believe there's a heavy bias. We feel still believe it's an echo chamber for the journalists and things like that. But you know what I mean? It is important. A lot of people use it and it does have relevance within the news cycle. We're long Twitter right now. Um, so, you know, that battle at 1200 for the gold, uh, Twitter show in life, you know, we're not, we're, we're happy with the way things to went today as, uh, as a trade team, uh, stockpickprofits.com. And, you know, if you want to be part of it, you know, if you need some help, raise your hand, we're here for you. Um, but you know, let's get into the news cycle a little bit. Uh, so the FBI finally fired Peter Strozik and, it makes sense, right? Uh, you know, there the big thing with him is no bias, but it's a little windy today. I should have closed the window, but uh, you know, it, it, it's the whole thing—a no bias bias, right? Well, it's funny. Right away, right after being fired, or that, from what we're reading, is even right after that testimony and stuff, he opened up a personal Twitter account, immediately befriended or followed all these resistance people, and he started a GoFundMe, uh, which is already up to twenty five thousand dollars. So, if you feel like uh, Peter Strozik needs a little help with whatever, go on that GoFundMe. It's funny, right? How you know. There was an interesting article today about how most millennials, uh, Democrats, or most Democrats, I'm sorry, not millennials, but most Democrats, um, they've lost their favor of capitalism and socialism is uh, is uh, becoming more favorable with them. And I think it was the favorability rating of capitalism was 47%. Uh, the last time they did this survey, it was uh, in the low 50s. But there's an interesting thing to this too, right? When you think about it, think about the Democrats and why they have lost faith in capitalism. Here's a here's a theory for conversation, okay? Um, we're not stamping our 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 approval on this, but it's a it's food for thought. Think about this: How many decades have Democrats been watching their leaders, right? your your Bernie Sanders, your Nancy Pelosi's, all these people. How many decades have these people been watching them be telling them that we're going to make things better for you, that we're going to make things more affordable for you, that we're going to get you in college, that we're going to get you uh, to where you can pay your bills. And the whole time they've got three, four houses, they've got major salaries, they're traveling around the world. Um, and I'll give you an example in just a second. How many of them are getting tired of this and just believe capitalism is not for them? It's only for the wealthy, right? And that's interesting because think about this young lady, uh, Ocasio uh, Cortez, right? Think about it. Four weeks ago, she was just an uh, unknown candidate in the Queens. Nobody had heard of him. Nobody, nobody knew anything about her. Now, all of a sudden, she's jet setting. She was in Hawaii yesterday. She was actually in Hawaii. Uh, supporting one of our democratic con uh, democratic socialist contestants, uh, Kaniela Ng, and Kaniela Ng, and uh, she was here to support him and stuff. He lost. He lost. He, I think he was last in the race. But think about it. Five weeks ago, she probably couldn't even take a vacation. She probably couldn't. Now she's traveling the world. She's a jet setter and stuff. Is this that same thing that once these Democrats or liberals become leaders or politicians, all of a sudden they're no longer part of the poor. They're no longer understanding the poor. They become these wealthy, uh, entitled people. You have to ask yourself that whether you're a Republican or a Democrat or liberal or a conservative, you know, we're not taking a side on this, but just think about it. 
does it make sense? Um, and that, that's kind of just, you know, Peter Strozik. That's a very good example. You see, there was no bias, right? He sat there and swore up and down. There was no bias. And guess what? The minute he was no longer with the FBI, he immediately opened a personal Twitter and he starts refending the resistance. Yeah, no bias. Okay. And so, like we said, we don't take sides, but we do take the side of truth and right and wrong. Um, so tomorrow is a big day for the market. Let's get back on the markets because that's neither near here nor there. Um, tomorrow's a big day for the markets. Retailers take the, uh, uh, yeah, politicians, a great job if you can get it. Um, retail takes the spotlight tomorrow. Home Depot will be the first retailer to report, and then we'll start getting a bunch of retailers. So even as a trade team, we were looking for some retail plays today and we just didn't see anything we liked. And let's do the market. It's not really a good market for opening new positions. We're sitting on some positions. We're very happy with, um, the gold trade and stuff like that. It didn't go exactly the way we wanted it today, but we're way out on the options and we're going to give this time to gel and we're going to give it time to win this battle at 1200. Whether it does or not, we'll know soon enough, right? We're getting to that point where we'll know pretty soon. Um, but you know, talking about that, uh, gold trade, it reminded the trade team of a few months back when we first started doing the show, one of the most popular things we used to do was a couple times, and Samuel and, and Laura in the office will remember this. Uh, a lot of you members weren't members yet, but we used to go on the live show and we used to actually trade together. So we're going to do that tomorrow. Um, we've got two trades lined up. They're longer term trades. They're option trades. And we're going to play along live. Uh, so we'll tell you what the trades are tomorrow. Um, we're looking for the entry point on it. As always, just like when we did, I think the last one we did was the gold trade we did live, right? I think we got, what, 40, 35% in uh, three days. So you guys tune along. Now, we're not saying to play it. We're not recommending it. We're not telling you to buy it. We're just telling you this is what we're going to do. And let's have some fun and play along together, okay? Um, there's your disclaimer covered. So just kind of to review, you know, the Dow hit that four-day four losing streak today. Uh, most of it was based in the financials with uh, G Goldman Sachs and JP Morgan being down about 1%. It is windy today. Nice. Um, U.S. crude hit a seven-week low. For you uh, oil bugs out there, uh, is this the time to buy? Go ahead and post it. Um, let us know what you think. Uh, we opened up that gold, long gold trade a few days ago. Um, we expected, so we're looking for capitulation around 1200. We're looking for a reversal of that trend. Um, we've seen some signals that we think are following through. Today was just really an ugly day uh, and gold got caught in between it. You would think with all these geopolitical concerns that gold would be, as usual, the safe haven. Maybe it's not. Maybe it's not. Yeah. You know? So food for thought, Dan Kuzmarski. Not sure who that is, but welcome, Jeff. Um, so let's kind of just leave it at that for the day. Remember, we got Home Depot reporting tomorrow. That's our first real big of retail's earnings. And we got some more coming down the line in that. We're looking for some trades on that. The Twitter trade really got a nice bump there out of the blue when uh, Citrix came out and said they are no longer short it. Uh, unfortunately, Mark Cuban came on and he did on CNBC. He said he sold his Twitter. So it, that might have had a little bit to do with uh, the softness in the afternoon. Mark Cuban's a very, uh, very talented trader. Obviously, he's he's done very well in the market. And so, you know, we respect his opinion. He didn't sell Twitter, though, because he's not happy with it. He sold Twitter because he wants cash uh, to buy other things. So and like we said, tomorrow we'll, we'll, we'll do that. Let's trade together again. So we're, we'll trade one. And if you guys want to follow along, you can follow along. As always, it's not an offer to buy or sell any security. Um, it's for entertainment purposes only. So let's have some fun together. Let's do that tomorrow. We've already got two trades lined up and they're for December. So we'll be setting them up. Then we'll be riding them and, and seeing cashing them out big. Okay. Uh, other than that, we'll see how futures go overnight. Looks like the market there towards the end. Got a little softness towards the end, but that's people, that's a lot of fear. People don't want to hold stocks overnight. They don't want to be stuck in these positions um, should something happen dramatic with Turkey. Uh, we don't see that situation getting much worse than it is right now. Uh, other than that, the news cycle is pretty boring, just the usual anti-Trump stuff. Uh, oh, absolutely. We are big U.S. steel. Uh, and welcome, Jeff. I haven't seen you before, man. Welcome. Um, but yeah, Jeff, just to get... 
um, just to kind of touch on that, we've owned U.S. Steel from about nineteen twenty dollars uh, when they had that real bad earnings report. Um, about what was it? About three quarters ago, four quarters ago, we we were buyers then, and we'll hold on to this for a while. It's a good dividend pair, and it's a great stock. Uh, it's been in the past, of course. Past performance is no indicator of future performance. But in the past, it's been as high as, what, $200, $250. Uh, We think there's a return to the heyday, and we're going to stick with that, too. So we like U.S. Steel, too, uh, Jeff. So you guys uh, stay, um, stay, um, you you keep tuning into the show, Jeff, because we follow U.S. Steel all the time. And yes, Samuel, let's remind everyone our mission to, why aren't we? We're not showing our call to action here. Let me type you a new one. (laughs) For some reason, Samuel, it's not showing the comments when I'm clicking them. Let me try one more time. Oh, not showing it. Interesting, huh? Okay. All right. So anyways, look, we got this one. I got this one ready to go. So raise your hand if you need help. OK, uh, we're looking to create 1000 uh, families. We're looking to double their wealth uh, in under three years, 1000 families. So if you're interested, you need some help. Raise your hand. Click the link. Come on down. Um, and yeah, Jeff, uh, let's see if this is working now. There you go. Uh, Samuel, yours is not working for some reason. Interesting. Okay. All the rest are. But look, gang, so let's call it a show here. Um, you know, it was a fluxy day together. Like we said, uh, you know, it was it was really an interesting day. Futures last night were really blood red again. They looked ugly. Asia sold off. Europe sold off. The U.S. looked like it was going to go in the tank. Uh, you know, the market showed some real good resiliency. Showed there are some buyers in there. There shows, there, you know, it's probably not a big sell-off like people are, are kind of portraying with it. So we'll stick to our guns. We're still long gold. We're uh, we uh, we're long gold. We're long AINV. Uh, we're looking at a trade in oil. We've got two trades set up for tomorrow. Um, so we can... Uh, yeah, you know, the Elon and Tesla, it's just the same old crap. Uh, yeah, see, Samuel, for some reason, yours, your comments won't show. Um, but the Elon story is just a continuing saga, okay? And this will just continue until the SEC uh, files in uh, some kind of imp- inappropriate uh, charges for what he was doing with the techs. Uh, he's trying to backtrack and cover it right now with his little tweets about, oh, he had secured funding with this. It's funny. Yesterday, there was a big article in CNBC about how the Saudis are saying that they haven't committed funding. Today, he came out and he said that he's got some Saudi funding lined up, and that's why he was saying it. So look, you guys, the Elon Tesla story continues. It's re- really, really hasn't developed in any form or manner over the last couple of days. Uh, it's still the same stuff. So, you know, and right on, Jeff. Same to you. Um, so look, let's call it a day. It was an interesting day in the market. You know, like we said, it looked like it was going to be a blood red sell off. Ended up the market showed some resilience. We got a little green there during the day. Yeah, it was a soft afternoon, but that's to be expected in these situations because people just don't want to carry stocks overnight. Um, if you're looking for hot stocks right now, Twitter was a hot stock today. It was up about four or five percent at one point, kind of softened out there in the later in the day. Um, we've got the big retail stocks starting to report earnings. So there's some, probably some trades in there. We'll follow that. Uh, other than that, our big trade right now is we were, we were long gold right now and we've got our usual plays going on and we're looking at oil. So you guys have a great afternoon. Um, thank you all for joining us. Sorry, we're having a little technical problems with some of the posting of the uh, comments there, but as always, we'll get them fixed and we'll be back tomorrow. Okay. You guys have a great Monday afternoon.